I was born in Taiwan and I was educated uh, in Taiwan until I finished college degree. So I have my Bachelor of Science in Physics uh, at the National Tsinghua University. I graduated in 1977 and then after military service, then I went to United States for grad school. And I got my uh, PhD at Stanford University uh, in Applied Physics Department. Then after working at IBM uh, Research Center at Yorktown High for two years, then I joined the University of Texas at Austin in 1990. The research uh, at the University of Texas uh, that I do uh, concerns the properties of nanoscale materials, mostly electronic materials. And what we do is we, uh, in our research uh, area, we involve with try to design nanoscale materials and try to look at their property, to investigate their property, how they differ from the bulk materials, and just try to understand why the thing is the way they are. So we investigate electronic property, we investigate optical property, we investigate magnetic properties. And so even though I said we investigate the electrical, magnetic, and optical properties, but really, what we focus on is at the length scale where the quantum size effect become very important. And this may be, you know, for people who are not in physics background, may get scared, oh, we are quantum mechanics. But really, uh, this is a, it, it is at the length scale when, uh, really, you know, at very, very small length scale, that's when the quantum effect become very important and it dominate a lot of physical properties. So those are the area that we work on. Well, I, you know, have you ever uh, seen the, the TV series Star Trek? Yeah. Right? It always say, oh, space is the final frontier, right? Mm -hmm. You want to go boldly to where no one has gone before. And in, in science, that's a little bit like what we do. Even though we do not explore the outer space, we more of explore, the, you know, when I focus my research on nano uh, scale science, it is an area where a lot of phenomena that has never been explored before. So, yes, we are also exploring a new frontier. And it, you know, it's just because it's never been done, and that's what makes it fascinating. Uh, okay, so the Japanese graduate student, uh, they are more reserved. They do not express their opinion as much. But of course, this could be just a simple language you know, issue because they are not as confident as, you know. So in, in terms of the comparison to, uh, I would say, the American student. So American student, they will express their opinion, even when it's very, very immature, okay? But on the other hand, it was through this kind of questioning. That's where they can learn. And this is also is the one who gives the professor a lot of feedback. Oh, after all, they never got it. And maybe this is the way we deliver, we convey the message. We have to change, we have to adapt. But if the student do not give the professor feedback, then how would the professor real? You know, we are all human, right? No one is perfect. So perhaps it's a cultural thing that like here people respect authority a lot more. And in America, people don't respect authority. They want to challenge authority all the time. 
So I think there is a fine balance. So I don't know which way is better. It all depends on the situation. Sometimes one way is better, sometimes the other way is better. So. Now the scientific enterprise is very uh, is global, mm -hmm. okay, and people, uh, you know, the the globalization of scientific enterprise uh, really result from a few things, right? One is sometimes to do the cutting edge research. Often, what it requires the expertise sometimes does not reside in one country. Often, you know, maybe Japan will have the best of people with certain expertise. In America, we will have the best expert in certain expertise. And often, you know, what we find to move to the next uh, step, you require people to join their, their expertise to be able to take on the next important step. But that is sort of collaboration that is already occurring. And in all of this kind of exchange and collaboration, maybe it's easier in the, in the top part, but you really, in the graduate student time, you need to get yourself exposed to other culture. And uh, of course, um, America, it would be a, a place currently, you know, most people want to go. Uh, one observation that I have is in physics area, we have, you know, we have quite a lot of Asian students, but among all the Asian students, we have very little, we have very small percentage of Japanese students. I do not know why. Uh, it is something that I'm still trying to figure out. Uh, this guest professor program, I think, you know, ish, ish, you know, I feel it's very, you know, it, for me it is a new experience for me. Um, I'm still trying to understand. Uh, in the past, what I, I came to Japan a few times, but that's usually just going to a conference, you know, attend a meeting. And this is a time that I get a chance to see how graduate students work, and what's life here, what they think, and I think I'm enjoying it so far. So since I'm only here for a little bit over a week, so, but so far everything, I like it very much. And, uh, and one thing is in Japan, while I like it, the streets, it's always very clean. <laughs>